Come on, let's testify, sing, you alone. You alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit heal. Come on, say, you alone. Say, you're my friend and you are my brother. You're my friend and you are my brother, even though you are a king. Come on, if you love him, say, I love you more than any other. Let's raise our worship. See you alone. You alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit. See you alone. Sing that one more time. Sing, oh, precious. Oh, precious is that. Sing that makes. That makes me white as snow. No other found I know. Sing I need one today with my voice. I well, got to start here first. We always believe in the number three because it's the perfect number Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And today I don't want us to miss the three miracles in 1 Kings chapter 17. And we are going to do from verse 1 unto 24. To know that God is still in the miracle business. That's 1 Kings chapter 17, 
verse 1 to 24. It will mean well to all of us here today because we're getting a three in one to see how God we believe in miracles. He was a man known as Elijah, a prophet. And the prophet was like a pastor. That's what he is. In those days they called him a prophet, the man that hears from God and take the message that we do here today still. And here this prophet Elijah told Ahab, the king of Israel, that there be no more dew on the land. There be no more rain on the land until I say so. Could you believe that God gives a man power, a normal man like you and I, to pray that be no more dew on the grass, no more dew on the lawn because I say so. I think God is doing that powerful today, right now. Matter of fact, in the book of James, chapter 5, verse 16 to 18, it says that Elijah was a normal man like we are. No different. And he prayed that there'd be no rain for three and a half years and it didn't rain. And when he prayed that rain should come, rain fell and the crop begins to grow. I think when you sow your seed, God will let it grow. It is still happening today that there are famine in the land. There are time we go through a time of famine. There are time we go through a time of scarcity. We seem like nothing is happening for us. But God is going to rain on you today in the name of Jesus Christ. He's going to make you grow. He's going to do it because he says so. The prophet said it. There be no dew on the lawn. There be no rain. And Elijah predicted that. But that king Ahab was a wicked man. And though he was the king of Israel. The Bible says he probably one of the worst of the worst king they have ever had. You must remember. That whatever happens in this great country. Any country in the world. If the leadership is bad, you're going to feel some great hard aches. But if the leadership is good, God is going to pour his blessing over everyone in the name of Jesus Christ. It's no different. Please, don't ever name your children Jezebel. I hope there's no Jezebel here. Don't ever let your baby girl name Jezebel. I haven't seen anyone yet, any uh, women that have that name Jezebel from the Bible. Jezebel was the wife of Ahab. Think about that. So the prophet, God said, you have got to hide. Because they're going to kill the pastor. Because there's famine on the land. If there's no rain, if there's no water, nothing is going to grow. Reverend Grant just said that you need water. You need sunlight. So we'll understand how great it is. And God say, listen. I want you to hide out. Now God could do whatever he wants to. But he said, I want you to hide. I want you to go to a brook. I want you to go to a stream. And when you're there, I'm going to feed you. Whatever God promised, he will do. Whatever God promised, he will do. How about God telling you right now if you're in hardship? Or if God tell you a message right now that if you cannot put bread and butter on the table, he's going to send a bird to bring you bread and meat. 
God can do. That's what he told the prophet. You just hide. I will send a bird, a raven to feed you. He'll bring bread and he'll bring meat and you can drink the water from the stream. Church, I'm telling you, if God tells me that I probably want to wonder what's going to happen. What God says is going to happen will happen. A bird will feed you. I would like to go over that. God declares something that we would say is impossible. God is still in the impossibility world. For whatever he says, it means it and it will happen. But if God declared that a bird will feed you, would you believe that? I think God is speaking to you right now. God, I've been speaking to all of us. But every time he brought you something, you say it's not going to happen. Please, we have got to understand that what man said won't happen is possible with Almighty God. Even when it seems impossible, even when you say there's no way it's going to happen, it will happen if God says so. A bird. God does some weird stuff that we call weird. But God wanted a prophet to understand how great he is. That he could command a bird to bring him. I, I, we have better, better look at this. He's going to bring you bread and he's going to bring you meat. Boy, I think if God told me that now, I'd say, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, God. You see, a bird going to feed me. He's going to bring bread and he's going to bring meat. I think God is doing it right now. You just haven't seen his blessing. God is showing you the impossibility. God, God is showing you things, telling you things. But you have been arguing with him. You must say, yes, Lord, bring it on. 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 That's a miracle. That's a miracle. I know God is performing miracle in your life, but you have not been accepted it. You have not been. We have got to accept what God says. God says going to heal you, you're going to be healed. Don't let the devil put in the doubts in your mind. Has anyone got a testimony this morning? Does anyone have a testimony this morning how great God is? Does anyone have a testimony how great God is? Every breath of life. Do you know we went to bed tonight. I hope everyone did if you weren't at work. Do you, know, do you know the only time you know you're asleep is when you wake up this morning? Do you know you didn't know you're sleeping until I woke up this morning and realized, wait, wait a minute, what I did those hours, those breath that you breathed this morning was from heaven in the name of Jesus Christ. Why? Because there's some who are sleeping still right now and don't know they're sleeping. It's a miracle you're alive today. Can you get up and praise them? It's a miracle. Miracle. There are people right now in the world that I've not yet woke up to realize they were asleep. I'm glad I woke up this morning. I am. <laughs> Please be seated, family of God. A raven. A bird. God said, I command that bird to bring you bread and meat. I think God has been telling many of my family here 
that I've been bringing you bread and meat. But because of the source that brought it, you refuse it. Don't refuse your blessing when it arrives. Don't refuse your blessing when it arrives. It doesn't matter who brings it on. God will bring the worst of the worst thing for you to let you know it's him to provide for you. He does it every day. That's one miracle. Then you say you drink the water from the stream. Who want living water today to drink? Who want living water to drink? He said, drink that water from the stream. Then that stream dried up. Remember, he, the prophet said, no more rain. God could have brought more water. God could have made more water in that stream. But God didn't want him to stay there. There are times... God don't want you to stay where you're staying. When God said move, you move in the name of Jesus. got to say it in another way. There are times when we procrastinate. There are times when God has shown us a wide door to walk through. To get your favor. You must move when God say move. What your eyes and what your mind think is impossible and not impossible with God. God wanted the prophet to move on. He had another assignment for you. Do you know God have an assignment for everyone in here? Do you know God have an assignment for everyone? God have a project and a mission. He has blessed us with gifts and with talents. God have an assignment for every person sitting here. You must know when the assignment is there and go and move and do it. We have been too reluctant and procrastinating when God say move. Sometimes God wants to bless us to leave one job and go to another and we hesitate. Don't hesitate when God say move. Move and let me bless you. You know when it's God. Because another person is going to come and confirm what God say. Then another person is going to come and say, wait a minute. Something is happening. Something is happening in my life. Elijah, I want you to go down into this city of Nazarephah. Part of Sidon. I want you to go down to this city. Leave where you are by the brook. I've fed you with bread and I've fed you with meat. Now I want you to move. I want you to go to another city. Sometimes, church, your blessing isn't where you grew up. Sometimes your blessing isn't where you are. Sometimes the house you're in, there's no blessing in there for you. Sometimes the job you have, there's no blessing there. When God said, move on to another place, he wants you to go because he's waiting to bless you again. Who wants a... Say, man of God, move. Uh, Elijah didn't argue with him. Many people argue with God too much. Remember, God is perfect. He cannot make mistakes. And what is so great, he loves us. Go down to Zarephath. God spoke to the man of God, move. The way you are is, is dried up now. There's a famine here, you gotta move on. There are times we must get the chip off our shoulder. Stop blaming everybody for your problems and listen to what God has for you down the road. You need to wake up. Stop blaming. Stop blaming people. Sometimes people blame people for their own failures. Oh, I know why I'm poor. Because mama did it to me. 
I know why I'm poor because that person, they give me the opportunity to go forward. Listen, there are times we got to let what's behind stay behind and march on forward for victory because God has many things for you. Get the chip off your shoulder. Stop the blame game. Poor me. Poor me. I'm always getting a bad deal. Look, what, look what's happening over here. Why can't I get it? You know why you can't get it? Because you're not listening to what God is telling to move. Make a change in your life. When you're praying, God hears your prayer. It's more powerful than anything you could ever believe. Go, I said, man. The prophet went. He said, when you go there, I'm going to have command a woman to take care of you. God already told him. He arrived in the city gate. God already communicated with him. There was a woman there, a widow. She was getting sticks, branches of sticks. She was gathering wood to create a fire. Can I just stop there and give you a testimony? Many of our younger folks wouldn't understand. I said this woman was in the city. The prophet Elijah saw her picking up branches, dry branches, getting wood to make a fire, to cook. I had to do that in my lifetime. What about you? Anyone know what I'm... I could not spell the, ro the word stove. Stove? What's that? I could not spell the word range. My range and my stove. Mom said, boy, go get me some wood so I can make a fire to cook. Do I have a testimony in the house there? Does somebody know what I'm talking about? We have it too easy these days now. <laughs> we have gas stove, electric stove, and everything. Our electric stove and gas stove was to go get firewood outside. And if you don't come back in time, you know you're in trouble. Because mama wants to cook. Go find some good wood. Let's burn that and let's cook. That's what the woman was doing, getting ready to cook. And Elijah said, listen, all I need is some water. Remember God told him a woman is going to help him. When he get to the city, he didn't stand to argue with God there. He said, don't worry, when you get there, I'll provide for you. Do you know God is still in the providing business? God is still in the provision business. God will provide. He will provide. You got to trust him. With all your heart and with all your might. And lean not on your own understanding. Proverbs 3 verse 5 and 6. But rely on what God say. But let's go back to the story. He said, why are you going to get me some water? Will you bring me a piece of bread? Boy, it's a lot. A stranger arrived in your city. Ask him for some water. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Ask, and then he's demanding a piece of bread too. Oh, you know, somebody just said, wait a minute. Excuse me, I'm not your servant. Some people would have done that, right? But when God is orchestrating things, well, when God is moving things around, every enemy becomes your friend. Every obstacle. Is moving the Holy Ghost is like a magnet is moving everyone know the song something is about to happen I think God is about to have to do something great for someone in here tonight I think God is about to provide a miracle in your life I think God is about to perform a miracle in your life if you want a miracle can you stand right now miracle of healing prosperity break I say he's oh. 
I'm moving. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless you. I'm, I'm moving. I'm moving. Take it. Take your blessing. I'm moving. I'm moving. Oh! I'm moving. I'm going to bless you. Come on, let's bless it. Oh! Uh. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh! Have you received it? Have you? Oh, yes. I'm moving. I'm moving. I want to bless you. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is blessing somebody right now. God is blessing someone. Healing. Prosperity, breakthrough. Just sit in for a minute. Oh, hallelujah. Bring me some water. But while you're coming, bring me a piece of bread. God have already, church, God have already arranged and packaged your blessing for you. God have already arranged and packaged your blessing for you. Come on, did that woman, stranger, woman say, hey, I can bring you a little water. But all I have home is just a little flower in my jar. All I have in my jar is just a little flower. I can bring you some water, prophet man, man of God. But I just have enough flour in my jar. And a little olive oil in my bottle. I just have enough to feed my son and I. With this famine, we're just gonna make a little bread with a little flour that is left, with a little olive oil that is left. And then we're gonna eat and we're gonna die of hunger after that. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. The man of God say, the man of God say, Elijah, I, I, I come to let you know the little flower in your jar will never be empty. The little flower in your jar won't be empty. And the olive oil will never be empty. You just be obedient and bring me a loaf of bread. Before you even bake your bread, and you're gonna see miracle. The little flour you have in your jar, and little olive oil you have in it, I want to let you know it never run out in the name of Jesus Christ. There be plenty. There be plenty in the land. There be plenty in the land. Just say the Lord God Almighty. It will never run out because what God says will happen. That woman baked that bread, brought him some water. The flowers should be finished. And she went back home. She baked bread for herself and their family. The Bible says. 
she had water and they lived for days and the flower never run dry the, the oil never run dry God is going to bless you today you just need to believe him your flower won't run dry your, your bread won't run short the oil a little oil in my lamp keep it burning a little more oil in my lamp a little more oil in my lamp keep it burning keep it burning on oh hallelujah Come on, praise team. Burning. Can we get the lyrics up there? In my lamp, I pray. Keep it burning. Get more oil in. My lamp, keep it burning. Little more oil in my lamp. woman had faith she showed faith she didn't hesitate to go and bake that bread she believed what the man of God say today what is coming to my vocal cord is not Pastor Malcolm but is the word of God you have got to believe it it's his word if you don't believe it you will never have enough flour in your jar if you don't believe it your oil is going to run out who's going to believe the word of God today God is going to bless you today please be seated for a minute we are coming to a close so there one number one miracle we said we're perfect three. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. The number three is perfect. Esther fast three days. It's a perfect number. We're going to be doing water baptism next week. You've got to get your passport into heaven. And water baptism in one of those passports. Come and get it stamped by God. And give your life to Jesus Christ. Say, be no more famine in your land. Birds will feed you. Your resources will not run out because God is going to provide. Your vehicle will never stop because it's out of gas because God is going to provide. God is going to provide enough oil for your lamp to keep burning. But he has another promise for you. So the man of God stayed with this woman. It was a blessing. And all of a sudden, her son became sick. Severely sick. That he died, her son, her baby boy. One of the most heart-rending stuff is when children die. 
I, I, would, I, I don't want to even try to calibrate it in my mind. I know you don't want to when your little baby boy, baby girl dies. We can see it's happening to families on television. I, I could never wrap my hand around it. Because they're so innocent, they should live forever and forever the way we love them. That's what this woman felt. Her baby boy died in the presence of a man of God. Miracles around her. Yeah, that tragedy happens. Church, let me just say right there, hesitate for a minute before I go on. There are times we'll have some things to deal with and wonder if God is there. I want to let you know he's always there. He's always present. He's always there. But he has a purpose for everything that we cannot even see or understand. And this woman cried out, she says, man of God. Remember, Elijah was showing an attitude of gratitude here. Because this woman gave him housing, fed him. She didn't know what God told him. She was just being obedient, showing kindness, kindness. As many of the things that happen in building this church and continue building, many of it you don't really know what's going on, but you can see the results, what God is doing. And that child died. She cried out, Man of God, you brought problems into my house. Because you made God see my sin. She felt it was a sin she committed that her son died. I want to declare the word of God to everyone here today. Don't ever blame yourself. For something that happens to you, you said, because I did this sin, why it happened? If you don't have just facts. Don't beat up on yourself and say, because I did this, why it happened? No. Let God be the one to say so. I want to say that, Mary. I didn't do that with enough clarity. The woman began to blame herself. That because of my sin, man of God, you came here to point my sin out to Jehovah God. The God of Israel, that's why my son died. I'm saying I want you to assure yourself today. If you don't have just facts. When things happen in your life that is not beautiful or pretty, I want you to not say it's due to what I did. What you might say, God, help me. Give me help, Lord God. I need your help now. I need your help, Lord God. Show me in this situation how I can learn. Show me in this hardship how I can learn, Lord God. God, I won't blame you for my problems. I'm going to uplift you for showing me something today. How oh, great you are. Faith. Isaiah, Elijah says to her, Let me have your son. <laughs> Let me have your son. I just crying out to you today, let me have your problems. Let, let me have your problems. Send all your problems here. Send all your worries here because I care. Give me all the burden on my shoulder. I can bear it. Bring it on. Let me have your son. She was obedient to hand the son. She didn't say, you can't bring my son back to life. She hand over her son to the prophet. He didn't stay where she was to pray. He went up to the room he was staying. The upper room. Anyone know about the upper room? Does anyone know about the upper room? Does anyone know about the upper room? I don't think you know what the upper room is. That was a day of Pentecost. When the Holy Ghost came down. Oh, hallelujah. I'm going up into the... Who's coming? Who's going up into the upper room with me? Who's going to... Up, who is going to join me in the upper room? Who's going... I'm 
go where the Holy Ghost is. I'm going. The Holy Ghost appear there in the upper room. There are times you have to move from the basement and go to the penthouse where you're blessed. You got to get out of the basement and go to the upper room where your blessing is. Get out from the basement and go and have a better view of life. Stop blaming yourself. Poor me. I'm the one out getting the, the bad things all the time. You must say, Almighty God, help me. I need your help. That's simple. Who want to go to the upper room? Is anyone ready? For your blessing. Get out of the basement. Get out of the basement. And let's go to the upper room. The upper room where the Holy Ghost says. I'm getting out of where I'm at. Don't become placement. It's time you move to the penthouse. Where your blessing is. Stop blaming everybody and blaming yourself. When God is just waiting for you to wake up. Wake up today. Wake up. Stop. Don't worry about your education. Don't worry who likes you anymore. Say this I know. You might not like me, but this I know, my God loves me. Let me have your son, I'm going to the upper room. Place the boy in his bed. Oh, I wanted to let you know, the upper room is anointed with a... <laughs> I said the upper room is anointed with the power of the Holy Ghost. Anointed. Do you want to go where it's anointed? Show me. Do you want to go where it's anointed? I'm not staying down there anymore. Take the boy to the upper room. Not where they eat. Not where they die. I've got to go into Solomon's temple. That's why you're here today. Are you in the upper room today? Are you in the upper room? The light God Almighty said, take off your shoes because where you stand is holy ground. You're in the upper room. You're now in the upper room. Because where you stand is holy. Where you stand is righteous. God is going to bless you and anoint you from the sole of your feet to the crown of your head. He stretched over that little boy three times again, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And he said, Lord God Almighty, this woman be good to me. You can't afford her son to die. You know, God wants you not to be a fake. God wants you to have respect and reverence for him telling what you got in your heart. The man of God said, listen, you can't let this child die. God, this woman been good to me. God didn't hear him the first time. He went the second time. I said, this woman been good to me. You got to bring this child back to life. And the third time, Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, the child will come alive. You got to come alive now. You got to come alive. You got to come alive. You got to come alive. Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. They are one. Here is your son. He went back downstairs. Can you imagine the jubilation? What it says. She says. Then a woman told Elijah. Let's look at that together. No, I know for sure that you're a man of God. 
and that the Lord truly speak through you. Receive it. Receive. Receive your healing. Receive your healing. Receive it. Philippians chapter 1 verse 21 I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me it's not my will but his God is only using us to tell you and remind you that he's still bringing our children back to life hallelujah he's still bringing our children back to life then the woman told Elijah let's look at that again no, I know for sure. No guessing game. No maybe so. Not oops. God don't use oops. God don't use the word oops. He cannot make mistake. It's the first time for Jesus comes to raise Lazarus. To raise Jairus' daughter. To raise the woman from Nain, only son. When Jesus came in, those are the dead people brought back to life. It was the first time in the Bible that a prophet brought someone dead to life. God want to bring some of us who are dead right now. And bring your life abundantly. Who wants life? And it bring to you abundantly life. Life. Once I was dead, but now I'm alive. Once I was lost, now I'm found. Victory in the name of Jesus Christ. God is bringing back people alive. Three miracles. A bird feeding someone. A bird. Flower in the jar never ran out. The oil never ran out. And bringing back a child to life. You want that type of blessing upon you right now. My hope is built on Blood and rise. I dare not trust. I dare not trust the sleep. But holy trust in Jesus' name. Come on, let's sing that verse one more time. Say, My hope is built. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust. Trust the sweetest friend, but only me. Come on, if he's your son and rock, let's sing that together on Christ. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground is sinking. Let's sing when darkness seems. When darkness seems to hide, I rest on His unchanging grace. I rest on His unchanging grace. Say in every high, in every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds me. Come on, say on Christ the solid, on Christ the solid rock. shall come with trumpet sounds then he shall come with trumpet sound oh may I then say dressed in his righteousness in his righteousness alone 
Father, let's stand before the Lord. Come on, let's declare on Christ the solid rock. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Come on, say on Christ. On Christ the solid One more time, say on Christ. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground. All 